A few months ago, I moved to Utah, and now that we finally defeated the White Walkers and the everlasting winter has finally come to a close, I've been spending a lot of time exploring the American Southwest. So today we're gonna walk through what I've actually been taking with me in my camera bag during my travels and give you a little sprinkle of inspiration. Let's get into it. All right, so no camera bag video would be possible without the bag itself. I've tried just about every camera bag under the sun, and I keep on coming back to this one, the Wandered Provoke 31 liter. It has this nice water-resistant outer material, it looks great, and most importantly, it can store all of my stuff. I've actually been using this thing since around late 2019. I mean, remember 2019? We were all so young and naive back then. Like the rest of us, this bag has seen some shit since then, and I've put it through nearly every bit of brutal wear and tear possible, and it still continues to hold up great. They do have an updated version now that has made a ton of improvements, but I still have this older version of the bag, which is a testament to how great it is. I personally have the green color, but they have a ton of other options like black, blue, tan, orange. I think they even have like a camo option as well. On the side of the bag, we have a water bottle slash tripod slot. When I'm traveling, I typically bring the carbon fiber Peak Design travel tripod with me which I have some thoughts about. I got it for the Kickstarter price, which I think was around $400 at the time. And that price to me feels right, to be honest. Nowadays, I think this is priced at like $650, which seems pretty steep. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice small little tripod and it obviously fits super well in this bag, but it's really hard to justify spending that much on a tripod. You'll also notice that my version of the Peak Design tripod looks a little different. That's because I hated the included ball head. It was never really feeling sturdy enough, it was too hard to micro adjust, and it felt like it was gonna accidentally unlock it and drop my camera. So instead, I've swapped it for Slick Tripod's 45 LP ball head. It actually fits super flush with the Peak Design tripod and gives you that pro level tripod head combined with the lightweight and small form factor of the tripod itself, so best of both worlds. Note that you do need to buy the Peak Design Universal Head Adapter in order to put this ball head on this particular tripod. On the outside back plate of the bag, there's this small little pocket that I think was designed for a passport. In there, I keep a little mini notebook and a pen to take notes or journal or write out shot lists. Sometimes you just, you know, you gotta go analog. I also have an air tag in here. That way I can always keep an eye on my stuff just in case something happens. Like if a robber comes and steals your camera back, so you have to use Find My to track him down to his secret underground lair filled with man-eating sharks, and he forces you to learn TikTok dances and compete on Britain's Got Talent just to get your camera back. I mean, like, you never know. You wanna be prepared, you know? Opposite the tripod on this bag, there is a quick access zipper to get inside of the bag to get your camera. Personally, I don't use this given how I have the inside of the bag configured, which we can take a look at in a second. If I do need quick access, I'll instead use the Peak Design capture clip, which I've got on the shoulder strap here. It's great for hikes or times I need to sort of set down one camera and use another. The camera compartment itself is accessed through the back, which means you have to take the bag off in order to get your stuff. I know some folks don't like this, but personally, I prefer it. This way your bag kind of becomes its own little gear station. You set it down, open it up, and you can easily access everything everywhere all at once. I used to use the Peak Design Everyday Bag, and I know a big selling point of that bag is that you can access everything without taking off the bag. But it also means that you're constantly flipping back and forth to get to everything, not to mention everyone who's owned that bag has a horror story of forgetting to zip it up and everything goes flying out. Within the bag, there is this insert that I think they call the Pro Camera Cube. Wondered has a few different options for inserts, but this one gives you a little bit more space for your gear by allowing the padding to go all the way up throughout the full length of the bag, whereas their smaller camera cube comes up to just that middle section, and then you have sort of like empty space at the top. So let's make like Drake and start from the bottom of the bag and work our way up, shall we? In this middle section, I have the Sony A1 paired with the 16 to 35 millimeter G Master. Despite all the new Sony cameras that have come out over the past few years, the A1 still reigns supreme, which like, it should. It's Sony's flagship and it does it all. It remains the only camera that can shoot uncropped 4K 10-bit in all frame rates and still take super high resolution photos. As a hybrid photo video shooter, this is a must for me. 
My only complaints are that one, Sony tends to annoy the crap out of us by releasing a bunch of cool new software features for their newer, cheaper cameras and not giving us those same updates via firmware in the flagships. And then second is the lack of a flip screen. Now, this being primarily a photo camera, I don't need to flip into selfie screen mode for this camera at all, but there are a lot of times when I would want to get weird angles or low profile shots and not having that flip screen is a little bit frustrating. As for the 16 to 35 G Master, it's certainly starting to show its age and it's due for a refresh to the Mark II sometime soon here, but it is still one of the best images that you can get in a lens and I love it like a dog loves going for a car ride. And hey, if you love learning to make better content, from gear to tutorials to everything in between, I bet you'll enjoy subscribing to the channel. If you subscribe and comment Mesh Squad in the comments in the next seven days, I will select five of you to win my Lightroom presets. All right, so to the left of the A1, we've got the big daddy, the Sony 100-400 G Master. I've opted for this over the 70-200 for a few reasons, but honestly, most of those reasons don't exist anymore for me. I think many of you know that I used to live in San Francisco and there's honestly so many compositions that require the longer focal length range there. Whether it's compressing the city or the bridge or capturing the fog flows, I was using this lens all the time. But since moving to Utah, honestly, I'm finding myself taking this lens out a lot less. All right, so moving over to the right side of this bag, this is my sort of wild card section that I will rotate out depending on what I'm shooting, where I'm going, or maybe there's some new lens or piece of gear that I'm testing out. That's what goes in here. So if we're doing some product shots or client work, maybe I'll have the 35 millimeter F1.4 in there. Or if I'm heading out to the desert during the summer months, I'll bring the 20 millimeter G4 Astro or I was recently testing out the Sony ZV-E1 that lived in this slot for a few weeks. And if you haven't checked out that review, I'll link to it up here or here, one of the two. Moving up to the top slot, I've got this configured to allow for a second body, which is the Sony FX3 fitted with the 24 to 70 G Master version two. This is my main camera for all things video. And I'll still use the A1 as a B cam if I need a second angle or something. But as a general rule, I'm filming things on the FX3 and then taking all photos on the A1. Plus the form factor, rigging capabilities, and just overall usability of the FX3 for video, it's completely unmatched. Now you may have seen my FX3 rig videos, in which case you might be curious why this isn't rigged up. But this setup is for traveling light. So instead of bringing the full rig, I'll just bring the small rig cage and the NATO side handle to give me that second point of contact when filming. All right, so taking a look at this little mini slot here, this is where we keep a few other items. In here, I took the Sony ECM B1M, which is a super nifty little mic that goes straight onto the hot shoe of the FX3. The audio quality is great. You don't have to worry about powering it on and off, and you can adjust the direction of the audio pickup. And I just bang it on auto audio leveling, and it does a pretty good job of EQing for me. I also recently swapped in the new Slate memory card case from Polar Pro into this section of the bag. This thing is sick. It's waterproof, drop proof, there's inserts for CF Express A, B, SD, micro SD. Plus, I mean, just look at this thing. There's also a little bit of extra bonus space at the tip of the 24 to 70. Typically, I'll shove a rocket blower in there along with a camera strap. It's made from elk leather and it's super comfy. It forms around your neck and your shoulder really nicely, but I have no idea what the brand name is or what it's called. And I don't think you could get it outside of Germany, to be honest. I took that and then I put some Peak Design clips on it so I can have it on or off. I also keep a big old lens cloth in this section as well. None of these little dumpy ones, like give me that big chonky lens cloth, I need that. Lastly, I'll often bring a GoPro on this little necklace thing that I found on Amazon. I think this is one of the best ways to film POV style content. It just clips onto your neck rather than having it have to kind of strap on one of those big old chest mounts. Plus the field of view is actually closer to your face, which is also better since you're typically bringing your camera up to around your face rather than having it down at your chest. So on this little side slot here, I keep a two to five stop VND from Polar Pro. In my mind, this is the only VND that's at all worth buying. All the other ones I've tried are absolute dog trash. Just don't even bother. All right, in this top pocket, we have what I call the catch-all. Here I have a big handful of Sony batteries because you can never have enough. 
I keep all of the fresh batteries in here, and then once they're dead, I move them down to that wildcard pocket at the bottom. Next, I have the Sony Bluetooth remote. Let me just say, this thing slaps. The range is great, you can swap between photo and video modes, uh, you can autofocus, and you don't have to be pointed directly at the camera or the front of the camera, even if you're filming yourself from super far away. This next one is very important, a headlamp. As landscape photographer, there are countless times when you're shooting well beyond when the sun goes down. Get yourself one of these, keep it in your bag at all times because you never know when you're gonna find yourself hiking down off a mountain in the middle of the dark. I also keep a couple of small SD card readers in here. The first is a lightning cable so I can download my photos to my phone super easily. And then the second is a USB-C if I need to transfer something to my computer or my iPad. Speaking of iPad, this bag also has two slots inside the back plate for an iMac, iPad, iMac? Wow, no, an iPad or a MacBook. I'm personally rocking the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, and this thing is an absolute dream to edit on and it fits in here just fine. And then depending on where I'm going, I'll bring one of two things with me. Sometimes I'll bring the iPad Pro in the second slot, but now more often than not, I'm bringing the Nintendo Switch with me. I am absolutely obsessed with Tears of the Kingdom right now. For me, it's right up there with Ocarina of Time as the best Zelda game of all time. I just maxed out my barbarian armor, but I've still only done one temple. So if you're playing Zelda right now, let's drop an emoji of your favorite fused weapon down in the comments, and let's make it just super weird for all the people who didn't make it this far in the video and are wondering why there's a bunch of swords and rocks and bananas or something spammed in the comments. So I'm also curious, what is your favorite part of this kit and what would you swap out if you had the option to do so? Let me know in the comments, play thumb with the like button, subscribe for a chance to win my presets, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.